Delivering business presentations. This is chapter 10. We're talking about business communications for success, our open text textbook. Here are the questions you'll see in your guided lecture notes. Know that you need to read the textbook and <laughs> listen to this lecture to make sure you get everything. So let's begin by talking about topic and purpose. So any presentation needs to begin and lead with the purpose. What do you want to accomplish and what do you want your listeners to remember or do? That is critical in business. So what are people supposed to be able to know or be able to do after you've presented? Everything in your presentation needs to be focused on those purposes. If it's not focused on that, don't do it. The purposes of speeches are to inform, demonstrate, persuade, entertain, or mark a situation, a ceremonial speech. There are three initial constraints, your topic, time, and interest. What does that mean? Really think when you look at that topic about the appeal to the audience, the appropriateness of the topic itself in that context, and your own ability to present. So can you arouse a sympathetic, stimulated response from the audience with that topic? Is the topic appropriate for the audience? And can you, you, not someone else, but can you engage the audience on this topic? So what is a good topic? It should be new. It should be, in many cases, somewhat controversial, something that they can care about. It should be clear. They should know what they're listening to. It should be supported by sources and something that's interesting to you. So there's some of your passion there as well. So what are good thesis statements? When you are thinking about either presenting a topic or um, eventually having this written up, you wanna make sure that you have a declarative statement, one complete sentence that expresses what you are doing in that particular <laughs> presentation. You want to use specific languages, not vague generalities. Focus on a single idea and reflect consideration of the audience. So it's an evolution of the purpose and it's very specific, one sentence. So here are some sample statements. We're going to focus on three disabilities in the workplace, deafness, autism, and cerebral palsy, and the communication challenges associated with them. We're also going to discuss different ways to address these challenges. So this might be someone's stated thesis for a presentation. Here's another stated thesis for a presentation. Face negotiation theory is integral to conflict resolution and helps define a framework for cross-cultural communication. Here's another one. To teach students the importance of applying communication accommodation theory in various situations to avoid communication discrepancies between individuals with varying demographics, i.e. power, culture, language, and age. And here's a final one. Social identity affects group collaboration in the workplace. Now, let's evaluate those. So this first statement is a declarative statement, but it is not a single sentence. <laughs> it does use specific languages, but it's not a single idea. And we don't know if it considers the audience. We don't know the context there. So there are two big issues here. The second one. Declarative statement, yes. Single sentence, yes. Specific language, yes. But not a single idea. Even with a short sentence, you can include too much. And we don't know if it considers the audience. To teach students the importance of applying communication accommodation theory in various situations to avoid communication, <laughs> communication discrepancies between individuals with varying demographics. So that's not <laughs> a complete sentence. It's not a declarative statement. It's not a single sentence because it's not a sentence. While it does use specific languages, it's not a single idea. And it, we don't know if it considers the audience. So this is too much and it's a problem. Social identity affects group collaboration in the workplace. Is a declarative statement, is a single sentence, but does not have specific language. Language. It is a single idea, and we don't know if it considers the audience. So in this case, this would be a great starting point for a presentation or paper that is then revised to become more specific, to focus on what is actually proven in that presentation 
or in that paper. So you come back to it, make it better, and then you present. So here's an example statement. The spiral of silence theory states that people constantly scan the opinion climate to assess which opinion is gaining or losing support in a public forum in order to avoid the social isolation caused by having a minority opinion or being on the losing side. So this would be the example statement in the speech goals, the things that you would want to achieve with that particular statement. You would have to prove people constantly scan the opinion climate Listeners assess which opinion is gaining or losing support, and listeners want to avoid so social isolation caused by having a minority opinion. So you would need evidence for all three of those things. Um, and then for the presentation, you would give examples of scanning and some research about scanning. So we are already at four different areas of research. You would want to look at how listeners assess, research about listener assessment. So you would want to focus on that. We're now at five areas of support. And you would want to look at the goal of avoiding social isolation. So how does that work? Why do people do that? And you would want to look at research regarding the opinion statement under spiral of silence. Let's talk briefly about communication apprehension. It's normal to be nervous. <laughs> so don't beat yourself up for small mistakes. Please don't memorize your speeches, but practice them over and over and over. You don't want to memorize every word. You want to make sure you achieve your three or four or five goals per slide, the statements you want to make. And if you forget something and you're presenting, you say, oh, let me go back and briefly address something. All right, so if you make a small mistake, no, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to meet your goals for that slide. And you should have practiced a lot aloud. Organization and preparation do go a long way. And picking a topic you care about can help. So make sure you care about the topic you are talking about and know why it'll benefit your audience. So when you express to them why your field, you know, does something in particular, what, you know, why is this important and interesting? Remember speaking in public is not killing lions, right? You don't have to fight to the death. It is about a conversation. So know your audience, prepare, know why your topic's important, and then talk to them conversationally. Most business communication can and should be a conversation and directed in a conversational tone to your audience. That doesn't mean that you don't use uh, attention getters, it doesn't mean that you don't ask rhetorical questions, but it means that you can talk to them naturally uh, and sound like a regular person having a conversation open to input at the end and ready to talk to them. So if we're in class, this is what we would do. Um, we would brainstorm and we will do this in class later. So we'll think about how we would do a speech and how we would direct that speech to a particular audience to make it interesting to them. So in review, here are the guided lecture notes that you began with. What have you filled in? Take a look at the text, make sure you can add to that, <laughs> and think about what would be asked as a question for you in a test situation. So what's the application of this? And what go the things you're supposed to remember here? As a key takeaway from the chapter itself, you have to know yourself, your audience, and your specific purpose. So if you're doing anything, that's critical. And if I ask you what your specific purpose is, you should be able to respond.